This is Andy Schaefer's application engineer at Acuity, and today I'm talking about sketches in NX version 1880. Specifically, I want to talk about the techniques available to orient our sketches in space. I've found that many users, when they're new to NX, learn the basic tools for orienting sketches, and then they move on to other things. But there's actually a lot of productivity to be gained by taking a few minutes to learn some of the other techniques and I think you'll find that you also are creating more robust models. So let's get started. Rather than create an independent sketch, I'll choose the extrude command and we'll make a sketch that's uh, inside of our extrude then. Now the first thing to look at is the coordinate system that already exists here is oriented with our absolute origin and you can see the X, Y, and Z line up with our absolute directions also. So the, <clears throat> the easy sketch to understand is one where we select the X, Y plane. You see that uh, it's not changing the colors of our base coordinate system. What's happening here is it's superimposing the sketch coordinate system on the plane that we've selected. So here in red, you see the X, in green is the Y, and in blue is Z. Now, you certainly think of a sketch as a 2D object, but it is represented internally by this coordinate system. X is always the horizontal, Y is the vertical, and Z is our orientation. It's coming straight out of the screen at us. So that one is easy, but what about if we select say the the YZ plane. I'm going to move over to this one now. And so here it's maybe a little more confusing because our X of our sketch is being mapped to the Y of the base coordinate system and then the Y of the sketch is being mapped to Z. But you'll find if I'm going to click here and you'll see that the sketch orientation will prevail and we'll see that on the screen. So here is our X coming horizontally, Y is vertical, and that Z axis, the blue one we were looking at, is coming straight out at us. So that's always, always how that's going to work. Okay, let's continue now and look at the maybe the next more complex situation, and that's where we want to pick up a face of our part. So here's what's happening. I'm, I've not clicked anything yet. I've just moved over this face and NX is then superimposing that sketch coordinate system at the closest vertex to my mouse on that face. But where's it getting its horizontal orientation from? It's getting that from the closest thing that looks like a horizontal edge to it in this view. So watch what happens as I rotate my view so that this little edge becomes closer to horizontal. You can see that red x-axis is now oriented to that bottom edge, which is our angled edge. I'll just continue to rotate, and you can see it continuing to orient there. So again, as I move my mouse around, it's picking up those vertices or it will also pick up the, the center. But what if the feature we want to orient to doesn't exist on our face? For example, let's say we want to place a sketch on this face, but we want the horizontal to be oriented based on this edge right here. Well, we can do that, but now we need to add some of the other techniques that are available to us for sketch orientation. I'll begin this time by clicking the button here that says sketch section which is going to bring up a small dialog box. I'll make sure that my option is set to on plane and that the plane method is set to inferred. I'll go back again and pick the face so I've, now I've used my left mouse button and I've made a single click and you can see that logic that we discussed earlier where it's grabbed the x-axis orientation based on whatever was closest to the horizontal which was this edge down here. 
But remember, we said we wanted to orient to this edge up here. It doesn't really work to just go up and select this edge. There are three handles in here now, and we need to select a handle first before we make a, a change. So one handle is the horizontal, another is the origin, and a third is our direction here. Now this direction, if we just double click it, you can see what it does is it flips the Z direction of the sketch coordinate system. We were actually fine with it sticking out this way though. So what I wanted to do again was change the horizontal orientation. So now I'll select our horizontal handle and I'll come and select this horizontal edge, I'm sorry, this edge which we want to guide our horizontal orientation. And we can see that even though that isn't parallel to our sketch plane, what's happening is that NX is just projecting that vector onto our plane and that's what it's using for our horizontal. The other handle that we can utilize is the origin. And just like with the, uh, the horizontal here, it doesn't actually need to be on the sketch plane. So I can certainly click this vertice and move the origin of the sketch. But I can also select something that doesn't lie on the sketch face and it will project that edge onto our sketch face. Now let's consider a situation where the plane we want to put our sketch on does not yet exist. For this part of the demonstration, I'm going to be using the, uh, the work coordinate system. So I'll hit the W key and turn that on. Next, we'll go back into the extrude command. The plane that we want to put our sketch on for this example will be one inch parallel to this front face. Here's how we create that. I'll hit that sketch section button again. And previously we were using the inferred option. This time though, because our plane doesn't exist, we need to select new plane. There are many options here. Uh, again, the one that we'll work with in this lab is at distance. So I'll select the face and then type in my distance of one inch. Note that there are two vectors here. This can be a little confusing, but this vector is denoting the parallel direction and distance. This vector is the normal to our sketch. Let's continue here. There's a second option for us. Uh, our reference currently is set to horizontal. The only other option here is vertical. And what this means is that the vector that I select will represent the horizontal orientation of my sketch. Let's select this bottom edge. And so immediately you see, because I've got an origin method set to work part origin, it has projected the work coordinate system origin onto my one inch plane. So that's all the information required to generate the sketch orientation. I've got the one inch distance, here's my face, here's my horizontal orientation, and then it projected this work coordinate origin out. Okay, if that's not what I want and I explicitly want to select an origin, I'll choose specify point, and then I can come back to my model and specify a point and then it'll reposition that, uh, that sketch origin. Let's return to the new plane method again. I've set this to infer this time rather than the at distance that I used previously. I wanna show you that this inferred option responds to several different uh, types of selection. First, if I move into the screen and I just select a single face, well, of course, that's going to be my sketch face. But before going to another option, 
if I continue and I select a second face, it finds the bisector face for us, which is very powerful. However, I sometimes see new users getting confused by this. They have forgotten to increment their dialogue, made a second selection, and now it's not clear to them why they're getting this, this bisector plane. Similarly, I've got the inferred vector set. So when I select this option, uh, as we expect, I can select edges and it's going to uh, infer a vector from, from that edge. But if I move to a vertice and I pick just an edge here and I select, say, a midpoint there, it because I gave it a point to start with, it waited for a second point. And now that's the horizontal orientation. So now when I finally that dialog has uh, incremented itself and I select select point and now that's going to be my my sketch given those three inputs. Another common feature type involves placing a sketch tangent to a cylinder. Let's choose inferred again and see if this works for us on this cylinder. Well, it does work. It put a, a face tangent to the cylinder, but I was really hoping for it to be up on this side. And so I don't really have control over the angle that that inferred plane appears on my cylinder. So I'm going to need to switch to new plane. I'll stay with the inferred option for specify plane. Pick my face again. This time it starts out just as it did before. But remember, inferred often allows multiple inputs, and it does in this case also. So here I'll select the XZ plane of that coordinate system, and things shift. And now I'm given an angle which I can use to control the position of this plane. So if I go to uh, 180, it goes over to the side, and 270 is probably what I want. Next I would increment the dialog to get to specify vector. I'll choose my y-axis as horizontal and for specify point I'll select the origin here. So once again the coordinate system for the sketch lies on this plane. The x is represented by my horizontal direction and this coordinate system is positioned by projecting the point I selected up to the face. There's my sketch plane. I've discussed the sketch orientation tools in NX now. Let's talk about the productivity benefits you can realize by utilizing those sketch orientation tools in your modeling work. Here on the screen, I've got a simple block. It's got a cutout in it, and I can change the angle of the floor. I can change the depth of the cutout. What I need is a guide bar on the outside, and that bar will be parallel at all times to the floor, and it'll be offset half an inch in and half an inch up from the floor. Let's do this two different ways. In the first technique, I will not use any of those sketch orientation tools. I'll just grab the face and take whatever orientation it gives me. Next I'll choose the rectangle command and I'll use by three points because I need to draw this at an angle here. Okay this is going to be two and a half inches by 0.25. Next I will select the line and the edge because I would need to make these parallel to each other. Now looking at the dimensions, there are two continuous auto dimensions here, but they're probably not going to help me because I need to go off this corner and the dimension needs to be at the other orientation. So I'll choose rapid dimension and just recreate them. My method is perpendicular and that's, that's what I want. Okay, this one's half an inch. Slide that back up. And now in the other direction. Okay. And 
and there's my guide bar. So that will be reliable and robust if I make any changes here, but it was quite a few mouse clicks to get that set up, just sort of owing to the fact that I was working off at an angle. Let's try this again. This time we'll use the sketch orientation tools. I'll select extrude. And remember that uh, if I go in and just pick, I'm going to get the face and I won't be able to utilize those tools. So I must click the sketch section button. Now I can move in, select the face. And the first thing I want to do is change my horizontal orientation. So I'll click here to make that handle active. Select this edge of my angled face. Then I'll select the origin point itself. The origin here, so it's projected the origin point and it's projected my horizontal edge. Okay, now the sketch is a much easier task. I will go back to the rectangle command, but this time it's going to be by two points. And this time, the continuous auto dimensions are exactly what I'm looking for, because here's my sketch origin, and the continuous auto dimensions go to that origin. Oh, here I need to change this dimension to half an inch. And that's it. That's our sketch. Okay, let's give this a test. I'll return here to the move face command. This is what is creating the angle on the bottom of that cutout. So currently it's 15 degrees. Let's make it minus 10. see that works correctly. Now let's change the extrude itself and change that depth. So that sketch orientation is working, again, reliably and robustly. And it was much easier to create the sketch because we were able to draw orthogonally rather than have to draw our geometry off at that angle. One final topic is editing sketch orientations or faces once a sketch has been created and you've used it to create a feature. Recall that bisector plane that we accidentally made earlier. Let's look at how we could fix a situation like that. I'll choose ex the extrude command that initially made that feature, then hit sketch section. That drops us into the sketch plane. The only element that was actually created in the sketch was the circle. I'm going to rotate out of the sketch plane so you can see the orientation. Here's the X and Y, and here's that bisector face that was accidentally created. The way to edit this is to choose Reattach. And this drops us right back into the dialog box again with all of our original selections. So here for New Plane, I can select Inferred. I'll keep the same horizontal reference and origin, however, and watch what happens to my circle. I'll click OK, and it just jumped out to the new face. So let's hit Finish. And there's my updated feature.
Recall the sketch we placed on the tangent to the cylinder. If we want to edit that sketch, again, we go back into the sketch environment, hit reattach. But if all we want to do is change that angle, it, re, it uh, is available to us. I'll try 235. It rotates, and when I click OK, the sketch updates. Just a few quick reminders then about sketch orientation. As soon as you enter the extrude command, if you move it directly into the graphics window, you're going to have those basic tools available to you for orienting your sketches. If you need something a little more sophisticated, you've got to remember to hit this button, Sketch Section. That then places you into the dialog box for Create Sketch, which has more options. Use Inferred generally if the plane you want exists and you just need to change your orientation. If it doesn't exist, you're going to choose New Plane, and that gives you many more options. Remember that <clears throat> the Inferred uh, option here has many input types, and so you have to be a little careful of all that flexibility. The Q line will help you by telling you what NX is expecting next. And remember that the orange background indicates the active part of your dialogue. Thanks for watching the video today. I hope it was helpful to you.